did you want me to start? Oh, <laughs> I can. Okay. This okay. evening's PowerPoint is we're going to be discussing a drug-free approach to ADD, ADHD, and autism. And first, we uh, we want to start. I think we're going to kind of lay a little bit of a, some groundwork, a little foundation, so that we all are starting at the same point with some beginning knowledge of what these issues are all about. And we have with us tonight Barb Lagoni, who is a well, I refer to you, Barb, as a nutritionist. You have a degree in foods mm -hmm. and nutrition from Cornell University. Dr. Steve Cheney, who is retired professor emeritus from um, South Carolina. Dr. Oh, North, I think North, Carolina. North Carolina. And ah. those people get a little touchy about that I stuff. Know. <laughs> And uh, Dr. Cheney, we're thrilled to have him with us. He has uh, spent years teaching uh, first-year medical students about nutrition, has done cancer research, is a published uh, professor, scientist, researcher, and so he has some valid things he'll share with us. And uh, there is me, a mother and a grandmother, and a Shackley Master Coordinator, and Janine Neufer, who is a relatively new Shackley distributor and has had some incredible, her story is, is wonderful. I tell it all the time. I just love it. Very good. So so let's begin. Hi, everybody. And um, let's just, we're going to be talking a little bit more about ADHD and autism tonight, but I also want to mention attention deficit disorder because we found <laughs> this explanation <laughs> of attention deficit <laughs> disorder, um, uh, which is like me in spades here. But um, um, attention deficit disorder is just you know, the inability to focus and easily being distracted. Um, but, but we're going to focus tonight a little bit more click on the next, um, the, the next topic, which is ADHD and, um, and even autism, which has um, uh, has, is something that Janine has dealt with in her family with some really, uh, really wonderful results. Um, so let me just give you a few statistics to start with. Um, ADD, ADHD affects something like 9 million kids. Um, autism, um, 1 out of 13. Um, learning disabilities affects 5 to 10 percent of children. Alzheimer's and dementia, it is estimated because that is constantly on the increase, that by 2050, there will be close to 50% of people who are over the age of 85 are going to be dealing with that. One out of every four people, it is estimated, deal with some form of mental illness and, um, and depression, affects 20 million Americans, anxiety 40 million, and one out of every 10 people is on an antidepressant, and I think that number has gone up since we um, made this slide. So um, that, click, Joe. And so the, the, um, there's a book that is um, that we learned about that's called Healing the New Childhood Epidemics, Autism, Asthma, ADHD, and Allergies. It's by Kenneth Bach and Cameron Stouth. And um, I just wanted to mention, you know, they, they – they have a theory about what's causing all of this. And number one is they feel that toxins are just everywhere in, in a child's world. Um, the air is saturated with mercury from coal burning factories. Um, even coal burning factories that are coming online virtually every week in China, in India, uh, in, in um, Asian countries is affecting our air in the United States, and along with it comes IQ damaging lead water. Um, you've probably read about you know the medications that are found in water, the hydrocarbons, the, the pathogens. It's a it's a, it's a big concern, and now um, more and more we are learning about things that have happened to our food supply. The um, the chemicals, the hormones, the antibiotics, the, the things that animals are fed that have not been tested for human safety. So there's all of that, the genetically engineered foods. Uh, and then nutrition is deteriorating. The average intake of essential nutrients has steadily declined since 1980, replaced by very delicious, to be sure, but very unhealthy fast food and processed food. Um, 
uh, Janine's going to be telling us more about that. And then because the nutrition has declined and because the toxins have increased, it has affected the body's ability to detoxify. And so you put all these factors together and, uh, and it, it really is taxing the uh, immune system, the brain, which is one of the most sensitive organs in the human body. So click, Joe. So um, I wanted to give you just a little background before introducing you to Janine Neufer and Chase. And so Janine, um, tell us a little bit about, about Chase and, um, and what his world looked like before. It was just this last February now that you started making some changes in your, in your family. Tell us about what his life looked like before that. Well, before we got introduced to Shaxley, I um got this mom instinct. I had to get my Chase was in a private school. I had a feeling something was wrong. We just had he was just diagnosed with autism, and they just didn't have the means to help us. So um and he was diagnosed with ADHD when he was in um second grade. He's now actually in fourth grade, but he was diagnosed in second grade just because uh things a little off. I think I said you know just uh. But I just want to, what it happened with Chase is Chase was very, um, and we put him on medicine in second grade, so he's been on it for two years, and he was just. Janine, he did hold on a minute. Hand. We're having trouble he, hearing you. Um, let's see. why We were okay. hearing you better before, so I just want to make sure you were just, uh, you're fading in and out. Just Can you hear me bit. now better? Yeah, yeah, that's better. How about, okay, I hold my phone in front of me. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so when Chase was in school, he was when he was on the medicine and he he was often picked on. He he had a lot of social um anxiety and not knowing, I think a lot of it was brought on by the medication that he was on and I never changed his diet when he was diagnosed with um ADHD. And then we decided to start Shackley back in February. And after starting the Shackley and getting him on the um, the supplements that we need to get him on, he's done unbelievably better. It took about two months to notice a difference, so it was definitely um, something that you have to stick there with. You can't just give up and say, oh, it's not working, it's a week, and give him back his medicine, because you'll never notice a difference. you got to stick with it and make sure that you take out we, – we took out all the um, – uh, the wheat, and we took out a lot of dairy. We took out, so Chase has now like almond milk and stuff because we read a book that um, caseins and uh, the um, wheat is really hard for the kids that have autism, ADD, yes. ADHD process. So mm -hmm. we um, took a big, um, I don't know, we took, a, I think, a great risk and what we did we thought it was a risk we took him off the medicine and it ended up being the best thing we ever did for him he's now in um he went from being teased all the time to always being socially like in the playground he'd always be by himself he never like um gave a lot of um time to friends because people would be dis distracted with the way he spoke but now he seems to speak better and with a clearer mind since he's been off the medicine and he's engaging people and he's able to um, to uh, concentrate more in school. They were able to get him to go up three reading levels since um, he's mm. been in our, uh, in our new school district. Mm -hmm. And um, they've worked with him incredibly, but um, we've also worked with him and the social worker at the school, which I thought was incredible, recommended to me that I start Chase on supplements. And she said, I'm not allowed to tell people this, but you seem very open to this. And this was right around when we had started Jack Lee, so I was open to it. So then I went and I talked to my upline, and I said, what do you think about, you know, these supplements for kids that have the ADD and the autism? And she said that she definitely knows that they, you know, that the supplements work. So then I talked to Barb, and she gave me a regimen of um, supplements to give Chase, and we started it right away and within two and a half two months two and a half months we've no, we noticed an unbelievable difference in him and uh we, what else we have done is uh watch all the dye that is in our kids food and 
so right now we we don't deprive them. They still get fruit snacks, but they get organic ones that are dyed with like natural juices. If you look out for that, you could see that in a lot of products that they use dot, the number reds and then yellows. And if you get away from that and you go, we went more towards the natural, um, the natural food instead of the food that has all the dyes and the GMOs. And we've noticed mm-hmm. a huge difference with all of us using those products too. Hmm. And uh, so Chase takes, um, every morning he takes a GLA and he takes an omega-3 and he takes, um, we give him a vitalizer strip, but I think the most important one in there is the Vital E is what's helping him. And he also takes uh, the Optiflora, which I think helps the kids that have that because when kids have ADD and autism, I was... I read in a book that they have neurotransmitters in their in their stomach that actually talk to their brain. And it was the funniest thing. I called my mom and I told my mom, you know, have you ever heard that there's neurotransmitters that talk to your brain in your stomach? She goes, oh, Janine, that's bull. So I called her <laughs> doctor and my mom's a nurse and I called her friend who's a doctor and she said, and my mom actually called her, not me. And my mom said, is Janine just getting fed this bowl with these neurotransmitters and the stomach talking in the brain? And my mom's girlfriend, who's a physician, said, no, she's actually right. All the studies are pointing towards that. And my mom said, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. I can't believe you're getting your family on the right track. Uh, like uh, uh, Janine, uh, I'm going to stop you for a minute because I want to ask you just a couple more questions about this. So um, if you can, Joe, go back one slide. Because Janine, sure. back, back in February is when you made some dramatic changes in your whole family. T- tell them what happened at that time. Okay, so in February, Dan and I and Peyton all started Shackley 180, and we also decided to change the nutrition in all of the family, the other two little ones. And little by little, we were having problems in the beginning, getting Chase to want to eat a vegetable or something healthy, a piece of fruit for lunch. And Barb goes, don't do a piece of fruit for a snack. And she goes, don't do it all at once. Let it tell him if he eats three healthy things, you'll give him that cookie or you'll give him that, you know. And I did that. And little by little, the cookies just ran out and all the other food that I didn't want in the house ran out. <laughs> little by little, I replaced it with the vegetables and the, and the healthy snacks and the Shafty 180 bars. And, and now the kids are eating, you know, the healthy stuff instead of eating the stuff that we used to have in the house, and they don't even miss it. We go out to eat, and they, if they eat something fried, they feel sick. I'll tell them, don't eat that. You're going to wish you didn't eat that. You're going to feel sick. Mm. So oh, we all make good. big, big changes, and we don't have um, processed, anything really processed in our house anymore. Mm. We have, um, and, and we've made uh, healthier choices with drink what we drink. We make healthier choices with what we eat, and every morning, me, Chase, Dan, and Peyton now have a Shackley 180 shake in the morning because it's so easy. It's a no-brainer. It gets your body working really good in the morning. Mm-hmm. So those are the things we changed. And then all of us went on vitamins probably a good month after starting the Shackley 180 because just being um, introduced to these people and watching how good they feel, you're like, oh, I want to be like that. I want to feel good too, you know? Yeah. And uh, listen. Our whole family did a big turnaround, and uh, all, together we've lost 130 pounds. Oh, wow. my goodness. So that's I've just lost, amazing. I've lost 60, and Peyton's lost 30. Oh, that's and, – and Peyton is 11, right? Peyton's 11. 11. Sure. So um, we, th- we let's took take a doctor for her school stuff, and the doctor asked me if everything was okay at home because she had lost so much weight, and it's not normal <laughs> <laughs> to be able to shed those pounds. I'm like, what do you mean is everything okay at home? I'm like, I'm 40 pounds lighter too. And oh. she pounds lighter and we just made good changes and it was really easy for Peyton to do. And Dan is down 60 pounds? Now he's 60. It was, it was 60? Um, yeah, I've got to change this slide. Yeah, you're both looking good. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. So um, l- let, me, um, let me share a little bit of information about about healthy brains and why you got such such results as you did and, and what what we what we've been learning about this um, is that 
we know that, uh, and some of this information, by the way, comes from a book called Ultra Mind Solution by Mark Hyman, who is a medical doctor. And he says that um, for, for our brains to work well, we've got to get enough rest. And interesting that adults need about eight hours. Teenagers need about nine hours. In fact, Hans was just reading recently that they have changed the starting time for um, for the high school because they realized they were starting so early and kids were not were not getting enough sleep um, and so they they've got and little kids they need 10 hours um, exercise is very important that's how your circulation brings the good nutrients to the brain and carries toxins away we've got to help our children to be able to live in a more toxin-free environment. A lot of it we can't control, but a lot of it we can. Uh, and then have a healthy diet, just like Janine is describing, with real food, food that grows out of the mm. earth. The vegetables, the, the, the fruits, the, the grains, the, um, the organic things. And then there are certain nutrients that are just too critical to leave to chance and so we want to make sure that we're incorporating that so first thing we want to look at real quickly is just the effect of cleaners and certain foods on behavior and learning if you want to click Joe and um, and uh, Steve have you joined us yet no, not yet. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Joe. Yes, I'm here. Oh, there he is. Okay. He should be there. Oh, good. Okay, very good. So, Joe, Joe's going to talk yeah. about cleaners for a Just, second, and then come yeah, on in, Professor. And I, I think sometimes we overlook the effect that cleaners can have, um, you know, on on behavior even. And it was interesting to me. I was doing some reading on this, and said the average home contains about 62 toxic chemicals, which are not mm -hmm. disclosed on those product labels. And of more than 75,000 synthetic chemicals produced since 1945, less than 2% have been tested. And the importance of this is that chemicals, as I understand it, are attracted to and stored in fatty tissue. And the brain is a prime target because of its high fat composition. Mm. So. The cleaning products we use in our home do makes those do make a difference, and it's why so many of us are just we feel so good about the Shackley cleaning products. They're they're safe. They don't have any of these toxic chemicals. They're powerful. They work even though they're you know organic and natural and environmentally safe. They're all green and they're smart in terms of being cost effective. And it's th that those are some of the reasons why I think you know our cleaning products are used to clean the White House. And part of that is the um, for the Obamas with their daughter who has all these allergies. Um, you know, it's it's been a, a really a, a blessing for them. Uh, Oprah Winfrey is has fallen in love with Shackley cleaning products as well as Rachel Ray. So there's a direct component here with using Shackley Get Clean cleaning products and getting all those other cleaning chemicals out of our home. Okay, click. Okay, and let me talk about hidden food allergies. So when we talk about some of these hidden causes for uh, ADD, ADHD, autism, the things that kind of lurk beneath the surface. So, you know, one of the things I often tell somebody is, you know, if your kid eats something and they immediately start coughing or wetting the bed or they have persistent cold or stuffy nose, ear problems, leg and muscle cramps, nosebleeds, you know, pale skin, dark circles under the eyes, those are things that are pretty symptomatic. It was kind of funny when, when, our, when our son was Chase's age or a little, bit, a little bit older and he'd come home from school and he'd have dark circles under his eyes, mm. uh, Suzanne would, would say, oh, well, you must, somebody must have had a birthday party today <laughs> and brought in, um. brought in cookies and candies to school. And he said, how did you know? Oh. Mm. He never oh. could figure that out. But, <laughs> you know, it, so those are the sort of things <laughs> that you, you kind of know intuitively. But the hyperactivity, the poor attention span, the irritability, those can be hidden food allergies. And, and so we don't realize that those food sensitivities can be associated with behavioral issues like ADHD and autism. And, and, and then finally, there are some, you know, there are things like gluten intolerance. Um, I know Janine mentioned taking Chase off, uh, 
off uh, wheat products and dairy products. So milk and dairy is a big offender. Gluten can be a big offender, but there can be kids who will be allergic to corn or to nuts. You don't always know, and these things are so ubiquitous um, that they can make it even more difficult to figure out those food allergies. It might be the underlying cause. Next slide. And then are the food, add food additives. This artificial stuff that's put in there, the colorings, the flavorings, preservatives, so forth and so on, uh, click forward. And so if you look at hyperactivity, it's kind of interesting. It's all in how you read the data. Uh, as Mark Twain said, they're lies, they're damn lies, and then there's statistics. <laughs> 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 if you look at the studies, uh, the studies say that, you know, when, when they test kids for a particular uh, food coloring or food flavor, typically they'll, they'll test them against a panel of maybe half a dozen, uh, you know, artif artificial colors, artificial flavors, and they'll find that 2 to 3% of the kids are sensitive to those particular additives that they, that they give them. And so you can look at that and say, well, 2 to 3%, that's an insignificant number. But remember, they only tested them against half a dozen. There are over 1,300 oh additives my goodness. in our food supply. And the average kid is even over, eating over 10 pounds of that stuff a year. And that's not even to, to think about the possible cancer risk, because most of these things really haven't been adequately tested. You, know, you can test them in rats, but then you don't really know what's going to happen in, in people. But here's the deal. If you eat something as a kid that may cause cancer, you may not know it until 20 or 30 years later. You simply can't do studies that run for that length of time. So, you know, this is, you know, this is why I really think we should be avoiding that stuff. And then there's the hidden sugars. Uh, I call it hide and sweet. Um, the average kid eats about two pounds of, sh two pounds of sugar per week. And not all of that stuff is obvious. So if you started with ice cream and cake and sugar cookies and Hershey bars, you figure those things are loaded with sugar, and they are. But did you know that ketchup is 29% yes. sugar? Mm -hmm. There's more sugar in it than a sugar cookie. Uh, mm -hmm. And ice cream and cake. Fruit-flavored yogurt comes in at 14%. That's more than ice cream or cake. And there's certain kinds of shake and bake that are 50, over 50% sugar. And then there's the peanut butter. This is not the organic grind your own stuff. This is the stuff that uh, the kind of peanut butter that uh, choosy mothers choose. If you remember those ads, mm -hmm. um, they add sugar. Why you'd add sugar to peanut butter it makes no sense. But you'll find a lot of those peanut butters 12 to 25 percent sugar. So that's hidden. That's mm -hmm. stuff you didn't know about. Um, if you say, and then mm -hmm. next click. And so what is sugar? What does it do? Well, you know, it depletes essential nutrients. You know, you're, when you're eating those sugar cookies um, or the Hershey bars or the cake, you're not eating fresh fruits and vegetables, so you are, are not getting those essential nutrients that you need to be. And we know that if we have too much sugar, that can cause blood sugar swings, it can cause irritability, short attention span, mood swings. Does that sound anything like the problem that we're talking about here. Mm. So here's a here's kind of a funny graphic if you think about it. So click, if you think about cereals, um, they were actually started as a health food. I believe that was up in Kellogg, Sorry. Wisconsin, or Nebraska, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, or someplace like that. Mm -hmm. You all, you people that live up there would probably know more about that than I. <laughs> Michigan, but there was a health resort. Um, Kellogg, Michigan, where people went, I guess it was in the 20s, to eat good foods, live in the open air, and, and get healthier. And so they decided that the eggs and bacon and all that sort of stuff that, that people were eating wasn't good for them, but good, healthy, whole grain cereals, that would be much better. And that's where the original cereals came from, things like mm -hmm. cornflakes and Wheaties mm -hmm. and Cheerios. And if you click, you'll see a little symbol the amount of sugar in those was about 5 or 10%. And then next came, this is, a, this is a interesting one, 
100% bran flakes. Now, how much sugar do you think you'd find in 100% bran flakes? It's 20%. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm not quite sure how they get a, get away with calling it 100 percent. 100 percent. But there it is. But you know, the 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 food company said, you know, we want kids to really like this stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you click again, then they came up with things like Honey Nut Cheerios and click again Frosted Flakes. Um, and now you're up <laughs> to Honey Smacks. And then now you look at the click again. Um, and once more, I think it is. Oops. And I think that was, no, back there. Back, that was it. Go back. Um, so those more are 50% 50 or more. Now, can you imagine um, <sighs> pouring out the cereal in the morning for your kids and only filling half the bowl full because you're going to put the other, fill the other half with sugar? Yeah. Who, mm -hmm. who would do that? Mm. But that's what those, that's what those cereals contain. 50% or more sugar. Uh, it's mm. kind of frightening. So yeah, there's a lot of sugar hidden. Uh. And let's see, uh, who is doing this one? Uh, I have you on there. You have me on there. Oh, yeah. yes, it does say <laughs> Steve on there. It does say Steve on there. Well, I thought so, well, you were in the sugar department, but it's really, I, the, the thing that struck me about this was that more than 95% of autistic kids have gastrointestinal dysfunction. Hmm. And that the pro-inflammatory diet, which is very much what uh, Janine was describing to us a few minutes ago, very high in omega-6, you know, in, in, in processed fats, very low in the omega-3 fatty acids, because our American kids aren't snacking on sardines, um, very high in sugar and refined carbs, and very low in vegetables. And that Janine, didn't you say that Chase didn't eat vegetables at all before February. Oh, geez, did we did we mute her? No. Oh, Janine. Anyway, I, I that's one of the things that she told me, and that when he came home from uh, school, there she that was. He, that he would um, fix himself a box of macaroni and cheese. It never occurred no, no, to her. No. <laughs> never occurred to her. Are you there? That it was loaded with dyes. Okay, we're yeah we're picking up a uh, an echo there. So anyway, next slide, Joe. Okay, then. <gasps> oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. Are we having fun here? <laughs> well, Steve, the the next slide. Well, she's getting that back. The next slide is I about. Don't know the, how to get it back? Wait a second. Is about the digestive disorders. Okay, here we oh, go. you got it back, Joe. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. There Technology we are. here. Okay, yeah. so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and yes, yeah, so digestive, digestive disorders, and you mentioned that in the earlier slide, <clears throat> that can be, you know, if we use, and, and kids nowadays, uh, when they go in for uh, an earache, and by the way, earaches, are often caused by a milk allergy. So uh, one of the simplest things, if your kid has a lot of earaches, take them off dairy for a while, see if that makes a difference. But what most doctors do, instead of saying check out for maybe they are maybe they have a, an allergy to dairy or something like that, they'll say, oh yeah, we have just put them on antibiotics. And mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of kids, it's not just once a year, it's twice or three or 10 or 20 or 50 times a year. And so what happens is um, the friendly, that kills the friendly bacteria in our intestine. Those friendly bacteria protect our immune system. So that's part of it that, you know, it's like 70 to 80% of our immune system originates in the gut. Um, and so you get to take away those friendly bacteria, you weaken the immune system, but you also now start to cause candida to grow. Um, because you've taken all the friendly bacteria that would compete for that real estate. So the candida, the yeast, start to overgrow the intestine. And what they do is they compromise the intestine. Um, they cause little cracks and fissures. And by the way, they also release toxic substances that get absorbed into the bloodstream. And these substances can affect mood, they can affect focus, they can affect mental function. 
Um, but you can also create all sorts of inflammation allergic reactions because of the partially digested foods that are mm. getting through those little fissures in the intestine and, mm. and getting into the, the bloodstream. So, you know, that's a real problem. Another part the digestive problem is uh, it may be related to the candida overgrowth or maybe other causes, but we see in children with autism, a lot of them lack the normal complement of digestive enzymes. So they don't digest and utilize the nutrients as well as other kids. So even though they may not be eating a total junk food diet, they're still not getting the nutrients they need. Hmm. So this is where supplementation starts to become starts to play a role. And in the first place, that's where using probiotics and understanding that, that, that food allergies can cause some of these things like uh, ear infections and so forth, not always running to the doctor for antibiotics. All of these things can play a role. Click. Ah, and... So uh, then, you know, the, the thing is, and, and um, you know, Janine talked about taking Chase off the drugs because they were making him feel like a zombie and um, you know, affecting his behavior, his, his attitude. If you look at some of the side effects, anxiety, nervousness, insomnia, loss of appetite, weight loss, you know, headaches, dizziness, some mood alterations, um, and, you know. And in, in, in some cases, in kids, you even see suicidal thoughts, psychotic behavior. Um, you know, it really isn't a pretty, pretty picture. Uh, things like health consequences, like the increased blood pressure, regular heartbeat, a sudden death, yeah, that's a heck of a health consequence. Now, that isn't very frequent, yeah. mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it, it, it does happen. You bet. Um, and, and then there's a potential for abuse. You, you, know, you hear these stories from time mm -hmm. to time of, kids on uh, these medications who, who I don't know, some, I guess maybe they could double up on their prescription or something and they become dealers. Right. They go, in the, mm -hmm. they go to school and they give other kids the medications, um, you know, so it, it really is not a pretty picture. We want to avoid these things if we can. Um, and, you know, then there's some of the non-stimulant drugs. Again, you see a lot of those same symptoms, um, but now you can talk, and now you're actually starting to see organ damage, like liver liver damage. Hmm. So, so we can um, you can click, Joe. So the um, there are plenty of clinical trials that are showing how supplementation can improve nutritional status, can increase resistance to disease, and create fewer sick days, um, can improve cognitive learning, and improve. ADHD symptoms, and we wanted to highlight just a few of them, starting with um, GLA, and um, Janine was just starting to tell us about this when we lost her audio, is the GLA uh, complex. Children with ADHD are often less able to produce GLA, gamma linolenic acid. It's one of the um, uh, omega-6 fatty acids that the body uses to make prostaglandins, um, B-complex, very important nutrient for the nerves, for the brain, um, depleted by sugar, depleted by refined carbs, by stress, by medications, by caffeine. Um, we live in a very B vitamin deficient society. Optiflora, the probiotics to help, to help heal the gut, to restore the good natural um, microflora to the intestinal tra tract to help prevent candida, keep it under control. And what um, Janine was telling us a story about the neurotransmitters in the gut. Well, um, I think, Professor, on a call that we were doing, a webinar we were doing about a year ago, you had just come back from a, uh, a seminar about, about the gut, and um, it was and something like 60% of neurotransmitters, which is how nerve impulses are, are, are carried through the body, 60% are in the brain. I assumed all of them would be, but 40% of them are in the gut. Hmm. So begin healing the gut is one of the ways to, to improving the condition. And then omega-3 fatty acids. You heard Joe say earlier the brain is 60% fat. Never thought about... Um, what you were saying about the toxins yeah. from the cleaning products and the medications, all of that being stored there, but omega-3s are a significant part of the brain. And then 
protein, protein in the morning. Imagine the difference for the brain when you have a good um, protein and fiber breakfast instead of all the sugar that we saw in those cereals. Okay, click Joe. So um, omega-3 fatty acids, where are they? Well, there are two products that Shackley has. If your kids are probably not going to be snacking on sardines and anchovies uh, <laughs> and salmon. And I'll tell you, frankly, um, we have really reduced our fish intake because I just don't know how to, um, to guarantee uh, clean mm -hmm. sources of fish today. But um, the Omega Guard, because of the purity that um, Shackley insists upon in their standards, it, the Omega Guard, if children can swallow, it's a fabulous product. If not, there's a wonderful, chewable form of it, Mighty Smarts. They're just delicious. Um, B vitamins, very important. Um, you can uh, get them in a tablet if the child can swallow. If not, they're in the multivitamin called Incredivites. Um, and the, um, and the, and the also the multivitally when they can swallow and then the protein products have B vitamins in them so there's a way we can get those in them plus then protein stabilizes blood sugar. Um, omega-3 fatty acids, here's a little more detail about the Shackley Omega Guard, it's a full spectrum all seven omega-3 fatty acids including DHA which you've probably heard about how important that is for the brain development. Um, remember also that um, you heard when at the beginning when I told you about the book about the the four um, new epidemics, uh, childhood epidemics, and asthma was one of them, which is an inflammatory condition. Mm -hmm. And so remember that not only are omega-3 fatty acids wonderful for the brain, they are natural anti-inflammatories. And many conditions that people deal with today, eczema is very common in children, uh, are improved when you put omega-3 back into the diet, which is essential for our bodies. Uh, eczema, coli, any of the itises mean inflammation of something. Um, psoriasis and migraines uh, reduces the inflammatory um, ingredient C, reactive protein in the blood. Important for the brain, for the eyes, for the joints. Helps ADD and ADHD, memory loss and depression really important for those of us as adults as well and plays a crucial role in brain function as well as normal growth and development. Click. Steve, you want to tell them about that study? Oh, did we mute him? No. Oh. People are self-muted. I, I muted myself. Sorry oh, there you go. That. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> okay, go I ahead. am back. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is you know the interesting thing is we tend to just blindly trust food manufacturers. We tend to assume that uh, the stuff out there is safe, and so a lot of our a lot of our customers will go look for the least expensive source. It was a, there was a fascinating um, there was there was a lot that was in the news a lot in 2010. There was an environmental group. Um, that, who sued a single manufacturer who manufactured fish oil supplements. Uh, they you know, made them very, very inexpensively, and they could do that because they didn't have any quality controls. They just, I guess, ground the fish up or whatever they do, got the fish oil, <laughs> just mm -hmm. put in capsules and called it good, and they mm -hmm. slapped everybody's label on it. So the, this <laughs> environmental group sued the... Fish oil, that one fish oil manufacturers and all of these companies who were, who were selling the fish oil um, and for, for selling fish oil with PCBs. And, mm -hmm. and the fascinating part about it is that the FDA never acted on this, even though they were clearly contaminated. These uh, manufacturer and distributors of these uh, fish oil products were sued under California Proposition 65, which is a fair labeling law. <laughs> So they were, they were literally being sued for not labeling these products fish oil plus PCBs. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. Okay. Next. <laughs> oh, DHA, Powered Mighty Smarts. And my grandchildren, the two grandsons, call these Grandma Chews. <laughs> because uh, I, I insist, and then they have them at home, but they love to get them from me also. And I just realized, you know, the, the importance of this because a child's brain forms 
not just millions or billions. The child's brain forms trillions of cell connections during the first decade of life. So in those first 10 years, this is just an absolutely, you know, valuable product to have. And it just, you know, like it says, affects early brain and eye development. Um, kids just don't get enough of this because, like Barb said, they're not eating sardines and tuna and organ meats and don't know if we all want them to be eating all those things. Um, so it's just it's just a, a quality product to help with that brain development, which is, you know, so important. And um, they're high in DHA, the omega-3 that's needed for brain power. And DHA makes up about 97% of all the omega-3 fatty acids in the brain and 93% in the retina. So it's just the brain needs DHA to work. And this product tastes delicious. And it just, you, you, you know, it just, it helps with kids with brain development. So that's the, the key reason why you would want to use, have your, your children or grandchildren take this product. And then we have the any one of our protein products which build healthy cells and help to stabilize blood sugar, especially important for breakfast. And again, our two grandsons that are six and three and a half, they they love their protein drinks and in fact the three and a half year old when he comes over to the house he'll ask grandma can I have a protein shake mama didn't give me one today mm. and she has but he loves them so much that he wants them again and I feel good with him snacking on that they're good sources of protein low in fat and cholesterol uh, you know just it, you can get soy or whey if you want to avoid dairy. And I love the fact that it helps with stabilizing blood sugar levels. And it just, it tastes great. And it's a wonderful way to get that additional protein. And here's a recipe for peanut butter fudge. Um, I just made some of this yesterday and uh, for the kids. And and Mike and I ate some of it ourselves. It's a great That's, snack. that's good. Yeah, it mm -hmm. tastes good. So these are wonderful ways to start the day for breakfast. And protein is often a problem getting into children, and it's very oh, yeah. important for the brain because it stabilizes blood sugar. Yeah. Uh, let's go to B-complex, which is um, my favorite vitamin in the whole wide world. Um, improves mood through healthy brain function, uh, increases exercise performance through decreasing mental and physical fatigue, although that is not my concern with these um, Five-year-olds, they've got plenty of um, of energy and exercise, but it improves their memory, their energy, their overall vitality, their cognition, and it helps slow brain aging. All the news is good about B vitamins, and um, that is one of the world's best B complexes. It turns every woman into Mother Teresa and children into little angels. Next. Yeah, what a great so, way to live. Mm -hmm. Shackley and Credivites are for kids who cannot swallow tablets because they're chewable. And just they're well-balanced, well-rounded, just a, a wonderful product. And then there's the Vitaline Multi, which is swallowable. So that's obviously for kids who can swallow tablets as they get older. But the, the multivitamin plus the D8 or the Mighty Smarts plus a protein shake for breakfast just is a good foundational nutritional uh, protocol. And then there's the Optiflora. You've heard a ton of stuff about that. I think it just, remember simply that life flourishes with a healthy colon. We get a healthy colon with Optiflora. Putting it in the basic That's good. terms. So, so here's our review of factors that um, that damage the brain, toxins that um, Joe talked about earlier. So many of the chemicals, 80,000 have been introduced since the 1900, but only 500 or so have ever been tested for safety. Lack of nutrients, the B vitamins, the omegas, vitamin D is another one, very important for the brain. Um, lack of sleep, stress, these things all are damaging to the brain. Click. And so there is our um, healthy, happy, brainy kids collection. There's the, the multi, one they can swallow or one they can chew, B vitamins, Omega Guard, uh, or Mighty Smarts if they um, need to chew it, breakfast protein shakes. We have a whole variety, Shackley 180, meal shakes, energizing soy protein, all of those, Optiflora, the 
wonderful probiotic that is coated with three layers around it so it's not damaged by the stomach acids when we swallow that and then the additional ones in GLA as a I know one that Janine puts a star next to um, natural real foods you know vegetables at least six a day really work on that and eliminate the artificial coloring the artificial flavoring the sugar the junk food and then uh, I think there's one more slide Joe we could uh, skip to, or maybe that yeah Okay, and um, I just want to mention uh, many of you are on are joining us tonight who may not have begun using Shackley products, and we want you to know that we allow everyone to register as a member because that immediately gives you a 15% discount, and um, membership is 19.95. It's not expensive; it's a one-time thing if you're active, but. Um, one of the most popular products Shackley makes and um, one of the first ones that we put people on is called Vitalizer. It's that daily strip you see there with six tablets on it. Um, that is a remarkable uh, product. It has 12 patents on it based on 12 clinical studies. Um, it is it received, received all those patents because it has such an amazing delivery system, which means it's extremely well absorbed. It's got the omega in there. It's got B in there. It's got C in there the immune system and it's just an, a, a wonderful total foundation but when you purchase that a box of the vitalizer uh, you, your membership is free so I want to mention that because that's a great starting place um, when you're just beginning to use the products and Joe over to you that is a wrap yes thank you um, good job everyone and we have some questions uh, Barb maybe you know this is Janine giving her son vitalizer with iron uh, no, she. Um, no, I don't believe she does with iron. We use iron um, if kids have tested low on iron, but um, especially if they're involved in sports that they run a lot. You know the. Um, um, you know, soccer, those kinds of, of sports. Sometimes they need extra iron, but if they're big meat eaters, especially red meat, they get a lot of iron that way. Uh, please repeat supplements and dosage. Well, I put up the slide with the supplements on it. There you go. Um, well, it kind of depends, you know, if you've got a a, a seven-year-old or if you have a seventeen-year-old. But um, the wonderful thing is you can't overdose on them. So you you, you begin someplace, you know, uh, maybe it's with one B complex a day. Um, Maybe it's uh, one or two omega guard. Just you begin somewhere, and then and then just just pay attention and see what how they do well. But I know. Yeah, look for positive changes. And mm -hmm. um, I think for Janine, um, I wish we could hear her again. Well, I could try. Okay, uh, Janine, can we hear you? Janine, can you hear us? We, we lost you somehow. Okay. I'm here Are now. Can you hear oh, me? Yes, oh, there can. you are. Oh, gosh. How many B-complex do you give Chase? I, he takes three a day. And, okay. and is that in addition to the vitalizer? Yeah. Got it. Okay. So three a day but on I the B-complex. Mm -hmm. and, and GLA, I give him twice a day, and I give it to him in his lunch. That and the vitamin B. Okay, so okay. two GLA, and then uh, and then the protein shakes in the morning. Great. Okay, thanks. So, so stay uh, there, Janine. Okay, Steve. I'm this here. is this is for you to make a note of. The place where cereals were created was in Battle Creek, Michigan. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Sorry about that, but that's good. You know, like I said, you people up there well, would know that. Yeah, but actually, Mr. Mr. Post and Mr. Kellogg were the kind of Natural foods, health food gurus of their of the early 1900s, because mm -hmm. it was after it, it, the. It's fair to see what their companies have come to. I yeah. know, but it was after that um, the machinery had been developed that refines flour. Mm -hmm. sure. you know, so it was in the early 1900s, sometime. Mm -hmm. um, I have several people interested in the webinar. Couldn't come on tonight. Is this being recorded? And how can I access it in the future? Okay, and you go to betterhealthin31days.com, and not only will this one be um, archived there, but all the wellness webinars that we've been doing for the last um, several months, three months now, uh, are all are all there, so you can help yourself. 
If a child were able to take Vitalizer, would that be sufficient or would you recommend extra B complex and either fish oil or GLA? It's just so hard to say because it's different for every child. In the case of Janine, um, did you start right away, Janine, with the 3B complex or did you build up to it? I built up to it. Okay. I found that I love the B complex myself and my daughter loves it. And like you said, it makes angels out of children. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I mean, and it makes me a lot, a lot calmer too. So I, I <laughs> give my kids that. And we did not, a Omega Guard I get used to give Chase. But now I give him just the vitalizer script, script mm -hmm. um, strip. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't give him the extra anymore, but I used to. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah, but you found that it's not necessary now. Well, and his diet right, improved I, so much. I, I, right. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's one of the great things about Shapley supplements is that you don't need a prescription for exact amounts and you can start with just vitalizer, see how that works if there's not you know, the desired results that you want, then you add some of these other things. And, uh, and I think it's definitely age-related. I mean, obviously, if it's a very young child, uh, yeah. they wouldn't be ready for Vitalizer. Right. And that's where the Incredivites and the Mighty Smarts are where you might start them out. And then maybe as they can start to swallow, you go from Incredivites to Vitally. And when they're really able to handle more would be when you would go to the Vitalizer. To yeah. The Vitalizer. yeah. Um, I have, um, go ahead, Janine. Um, sorry. I also think that the GLA with Chase is very important, and that was something that I noticed once I upped it. He got better. Mm. Mm. And it's two a day for him, right? And he's 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's 127 pounds and 5'3". <laughs> he, oh sick. God, he weighs more than I do. <laughs> he took and after Jan his dad. You've met, you've and, met his dad. So. <laughs> and Jan Janine, just one one last thing because we we couldn't um, hear you for a little bit there, is that right. when so Chase started this program in February, and right. and by by the end of the school year in in May he had advanced three reading levels already. And then um, you did yeah. some tutoring with him over the summer, but you really, um, eat, through that six-month period, you really did a total change in his diet. All the pop was gone, replaced by water. Yeah. All the dyes were out all of his diet. diet, all vegetables now. And so um, when he started school then in August, what did you, what was different? You know what was different is I haven't even seen the social worker once. <laughs> no. Oh. The fact that the woman has not called me once is a problem and we've been in school for over a month is like, I can't even believe it. I told Dean, I'm like, I haven't even connected with the social worker this year. And last year it was like she was calling me all the time and problems. Oh. And it's been mm. nothing. That so alone is a I huge was... testimony. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is a huge testimony. And when you don't have your kid coming home saying, I mean, he doesn't feel like he's being teased anymore, and he's not, but it's not anything physical that's happened to him. It's just that his mind is clear, and he's able to socialize with kids easier. Sure, sure. Well, I think the the, the picture that you had painted when you, I first spoke with you about before he had started on this program, how the kids would all go out to the playground, and all the kids would be playing and having a good time, and he would be in the corner of the playground all by himself. Right. It's just that image was just so difficult, and now he's got friends. There, he's able to yeah. interact with. He can have friends come over now. I mean, what a what a wonderful change for him and his his world, and and how much happier he is. Right, and he notices it, which is great. He doesn't go for even when I tell him he could pick out a piece of candy for a special treat or something like that. I always am like, go for the chocolate. Like, don't. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Don't eat the red dyes. Don't, and he really knows he doesn't feel good on them. So I think mm -hmm. he, all my kids have make smart choices now because they don't want to feel bad. Wonderful. Um, Barb or Steve, can you comment on the effect of sports drinks on kids? Steve? <laughs> so, I mean, sports drinks uh, can be good and bad. I mean, uh, obviously... Any sports drinks, the rehydration drinks all play a role, 
but when you go with so many of them, I mean, my my take on it, if it comes in green and purple and blue, you probably want to avoid it because it's going to be <laughs> chock full of artificial colors and flavors and preservatives, and, you know, that's not where you want to go. So, they're, you know, they're... Uh, that's where the Shackley sport, the Shackley performance, the Shackley physique really make a difference because not only they designed to help kids do their best to recover from the sports, to stay properly hydrated, but to they, they also are all natural. Yeah, and and they make yeah. a wonderful beverage, a wonderful general beverage. You know, the uh, when it's hot. Um, there's it never like gets that. hot in, in, in Chicago, does it? Oh, get out! <laughs> yeah, and, then, and so and, you and don't know what hot is. And that's really important for kids. <laughs> you know, hydration is a you know the brain cannot function if it gets dehydrated. So yes, right. I, I'm I'm avoiding that wisecrack. We had 95 by the way this year. Uh, Recently. Janine. Another right. question, uh, what yeah. does Janine's pediatrician say about all of this regarding Chase? You, you know, in the beginning, she I didn't tell her much. <laughs> but little by little, after I told her that, well, I, you know, I was like, I told her about the vitamins and stuff. I'm like, I'm going to play around with this myself, you know, and pull the um, prescriptions, but after they see the kid and they see how well they're doing, yeah. they, they really just go along with it. I have to be honest with you. And even my doctor, because I told Barb, and this is another story for another time, but I am free of my um, antidepressants after being on them for 17 years. Wow. And it's been about six weeks. And I will tell you, I feel like a new woman too. And it's just, there's so, and my doctor said the same thing. My psychiatrist is like, she didn't try to push it on me, which was great, because she thought I was doing Good. wonderful. <laughs> oh, it's so uh, great to hear that. Here's a question. Unemployed, fixed income, government assistance, any help in prices? Uh, no, not, not in prices, but we have a bit of business model well, that we can work with yeah, people and, to help them. And, and you know what else is that many folks are on are on budgets today. So we take that very seriously. I will tell you, we, we just mentioned the cleaning products very briefly, but you will save at least $200 on cleaning products. They are so inexpensive and very effective. And that's and you get the toxins out. All the news is good with that. And, you know, Vitaly, the multi, is not expensive. That's, uh, I think it comes out to be around 10 or $11 a month for that product for an adult. So a little kid, if they can swallow, they can take one of those a day. I mean, we, we always work with people to find ways to make things affordable. But I will tell you, junk food is not cheap. No. You no. can drop a lot of a lot of money on on chips and and sweets and snack foods and 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 when you're eating whole natural food, you are not hungry for that other stuff. So you know, when your budget is, is tight, you want to really spend the, the food dollars carefully on food that's really healthy for you. Okay, good. Any, uh, is there a charge for the healthy in 31 days access? Oh, Remember? better health in 31 days? Better health, yes. Yes, it's $14 a month, I think, and, and you, um, you register, do you, do you register at bobsfiles.net? I need to find that out. Yes. I think you register at bobsfiles.net, but that is a really useful site. We're, we're using it a lot in our group, betterhealthin31days.com. Yes, better health and th I'll run together. Okay. At what age would you start a child on Vitalizer? Well, I personally would start them on it when they can, when they can swallow, but the... Um, but I wouldn't do two vitally a day, probably. You know, yeah. it depends on, on how big they are. I mean, I you can't go by the age because Janine just said her yes, son right. weighs more than I do at at, at age um, ten. Yeah, he's five three. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I um, I, I think you can get the products that are in Vitalizer. Um, separately, I would buy B Complex separately, the Omega separately, the Vitaly separately, the Optiflora. You could do that. Mm-hmm. 
you know, until until they're but boy, when they start being 10, 11, 12 years old, their their nutritional needs are high because they're growing so much. Mm-hmm. People are asking for the password to Better Health in 31 Days, but you get a password when you subscribe to that website. So there is there is no password for us to give out. You you have to get your own. And Bob'sFiles.net is a free site, but you make up your own password when you go in there. Uh, someone is saying no money. Try the three and free Lean and Healthy Kit with a free membership. Mm-hmm. That's a good yeah. idea. Good idea. Excellent. That's it. It's a wrap. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone, for joining us this evening and. Next Monday, Barb, the um, asthma. Promise. Breathe freely. We're gonna. You're gonna hear a wonderful story of um, oh, a little girl. She really had a time uh, with asthma, and um, and we're gonna tell you what her mother did and how how she got um, you know back on the road and off of all her asthma medications. You're gonna be surprised. Asthma is amazingly common. I think it's one out of twelve kids now. So. It'll be a, that's a really going to be an interesting one, and then after that, we're going to be talking um, in October. We're going to be talking about allergies, and um, uh, anyway, we'll we'll tell you more about those in in, uh, in in a couple of weeks. Okay. Good night, everyone. Have a great week. Good night. Good night.